Let's go to the rest of the day's news now. And Ukraine's power supply has been cut by a third, according to authorities, as Russia continues to target the country's infrastructure. People are being urged to drastically reduce their electricity use as a result. More than four and a half million Ukrainians have experienced power cuts over the past month. Our correspondent James Waterhouse has been to the city of Kremachuk in central Ukraine, one of the worst affected areas. In this dark, a torch acts as an icebreaker. Light here is in short supply, and life is harder as a result. The Zamorsky family only have electricity for a couple of hours at a time. Some blackouts are planned and some aren't. 12-year-old Ileana is under no illusions as to what's behind them. They think Ukraine is weaker and will die soon because of power outages and people will flee from here, making it easier for Russia to take over Ukraine. Moscow is trying to pressurize places it can't reach. Everyone understands it's not working. They can only make people angrier. Russian strikes have reportedly destroyed a third of the country's power stations this past month. They're not influencing the battlefield. But they're forcing places like this nursery to adapt. A new generator from Poland becoming the latest toy. Some of these children have learning disabilities and blackouts often coincide with air raid sirens. I think if they come today, they will be killing us just because we are Ukrainians. We will buy gas cylinders, wood-burning stoves, generators. We will be standing until the end. Russia wants to lower Ukraine's morale ahead of what will be a long winter. And yet, out of all the cities we've been through, there hasn't been one person who said, I want the war to end tomorrow because of these power cuts. Yes, they're being felt, but there's history at play. Ukrainians have always faced threats to their existence. It's why survival is central to people's identities. Under candle and phone light, there's always room for salsa. I'm not going to stop dancing, says the teacher Yana, because it really saves us. There is nothing this war doesn't touch or interrupt. Regardless of where you are in Ukraine. James Waterhouse, BBC News, Kremenchuk.